Hi, I'm William Shekel from the Chambers Rescue Channel, and today I want to talk to you about how to put a skirt on your Chambers stove. The skirt I'm going to show you how to put on will work for many Model Bs and, of course, the Model C, which I'm standing in front of. The skirt is just a decorative item. It has no function beyond really making sure that whatever you drop doesn't roll under the stove. You will see in some forums now and then people still quoting an old misconception that it'll prevent the oven pilot from blowing out because of a draft. I just want to make it very clear that if your oven pilot will blow out because of a draft, you have a much bigger problem than whether or not you have a skirt and you need to call somebody who knows how to work on these to solve it for you or you need to do a deep dive into the manual and solve it yourself. Either way, the skirt is just a decoration. But it looks nice and people like them, so it would be handy if you knew how to put one on. Now, I have mine up here raised for you so because it's easier to film if it's raised, at least until I'm all finished. You don't have to do this. I do, however, advise doing the first step before you put the stove in place. And if it's already in place, you got to pull it out. Uh, in order to get this first step done. So let me take you over to the bench and I'll show you the different parts of the skirt that we have to put together. First one is obviously the front, uh, the front panel. This has two brackets on it on either end that snap onto the leg. So just to show you this, not on the stove itself. So here's a, a, a Model C leg. This just snaps right in here like that and it's tension that holds that in place. That's really all there is to it. It's just, of course, there's extra parts, and there's extra steps, but this is the bulk of what you're trying to accomplish on the stove. Then, of course, we have two of these side panels. They screw onto the front panel here. So you notice on either end, there are two screw holes. You're gonna screw, you're gonna place screws Through the, uh, through the holes so that that is ni nice and tight, making a U-shaped uh, skirt to slip on. Now, the important part about this piece is notice this little flange right here. This is what keeps the, the, uh, the side panel from kind of flopping out and making you know, a W instead of a nice tight U. What holds it on in the back is this flange right here. And this is actually gonna be step one. We're gonna screw this on to the back of the stove so that when we put the skirt on, it will catch like this to hold it in place so that the side panels stay neatly tucked underneath the stove and don't spring out. With these flanges, it's important to note that they are not identical. They're mirror images of themselves. One has to go on the right-hand side of the stove as you face it. The other one has to go on the left-hand side of the stove as you face it, so that these tabs stick out in the right way to fit into the slots on the, on the back of the side panel that I just showed you. So let's see how these go onto the stove. Okay, so I spun this stove around and positioned the camera so that you can see these two holes here in the back of the stove, just to the left of the back leg on, the, on this side and on, to the right of the back leg on the other side. This little flange is going to fit on right here. I'm going to line that up so the holes poke through. And this is not height adjustable. It only fits in this way. In the top hole, and the third hole from the top. And you want to align the flange so that this little part is facing forward. And we're gonna screw it in right here. Now the screws that originally came with the stove are right here. You'll notice they're about three eighths of an inch long. If yours doesn't have the original screws, you misplace them. I believe 1024 thread screws will fit. These are three eighths of an inch, but the length doesn't matter that much because there's nothing behind here that this is going to hit. So you can, and if you only have really long screws, you could put them in there. But it's a 1024 slope or just use the original screws. Or if you got the, your, screw, uh, your skirt from a restorer, uh, ask them to, to send you screws that will fit these holes. So there, if you see, this is all nice and screwed in. Let me come around to the side. See, that's screwed in nicely right here for this facing forward. Now, 
If you have an unrestored stove, I will tell you, these are almost always mangled beyond belief because people forget to take them off when they move their stove and they get bent very easily because it's a very thin gauge steel. So it's important that the flange that stick forward be straight and approximately right here. If that's not the case for yours, bend it back into shape or get new ones. Um, it doesn't matter if, you know, back here is, uh, is bent or dinged up because no one will ever see it. This is the back of your stove. So we're going to do this on the other side too. Now here it is on the other side with the flange pointing forward so that we can slip the skirt on. Now we're going to assemble the side panels onto the front panel of the skirt. Now the way we do this is we take the side panel and we put our screws into the two holes in the front of it. And it doesn't matter which side panel goes on which side of the, uh, of the front piece. And we just slide it into these two holes. Now I'm going to have to do this off camera because there's no way for me to reach over, but we just slide the nut inside, take the nut and put it inside there. If you see where the two come, where the two screws stick through the front panel, you just go in and tighten it there. You'll see on, on originals, often the screw is done the other way, which I find makes it kind of difficult. So switch the screws around, get your screwdriver straight down there, hold the nut into place and tighten, or even you know, hold it in place with a vice grip and tighten uh, until it's nice and snug. And uh, I'll show you what that looks like in just a sec. So this is my, uh, what it looks like when it's all done. Those screws are nice and snug. This all comes up, there's no rattle. You don't need to go crazy with tightening. It just needs to be nice and snug. Hold that nut back there and, uh, and keep tightening and then screw it in so it's good and solid. And then you're fine to move on and do it to the other side. Okay, so now the stove is down so that the skirt will slip in nice and easily and you can see what it looks like when it's all done. So now that our skirt is fully assembled, we're going to slide it most of the way under the, the stove so that we can align it with the legs and then I'll show you what to do next. But before we do that, I just want to point out, you will see these two little holes on this front lip of the, of the skirt. They are there in case you want to screw the skirt permanently into the stove. I don't recommend doing that for a couple of reasons. First, you ever want to move the stove? You have to get a really small screwdriver and get it in there. Second, um, it makes it harder to clean underneath there because it's adding an extra step. And third, it's really not necessary. The, sto the, the skirt's not going anywhere. It's going to be fine. And I'm going to say that fewer than 10% of the Model Cs that I have moved have had them screwed into place. It's a, it wasn't even consistent back in the day. I would say it, it, it's a skippable step. Well, what isn't a skippable step is sliding this so that it's, we can make sure that the clips are lining up to the legs. And now we're going to push the rest of the way while holding the side panels in a little. So we're just going to reach around on either side and push in so that those, that tab and that flange can connect and hold the side panels into place. That's what we're looking for, that snap. So now let's take a look at how we did in the back. Nice and straight and nice and straight back here too. So if I pull back far enough for you to see the whole stove, you can see the skirt does give it a nice finished look. The black meets the ground and you know there's no dust bunnies running around. With a properly functioning stove, this has no impact whatsoever on performance. The flow of oxygen inside the oven cabinet will be fine. Your pilot will be fine. Um, it is really just a decorative option that you can choose just like the original buyers of chamber stoves back in the 50s. Uh, opted to or didn't. And I'd say about a quarter of the stoves that I see in their original place have the skirts and the rest don't. Choice is up to you, but now you know how to do it. So thanks, and I'll see you next time on the Chambers Rescue Channel.